This is the Catholic Daily Journal for May the 11th, 2019. Today is the feast of St. Mamertus, the first of the ice saints. Yes, the ice saints. St. Mamertus is interesting in himself, even if he's mostly unknown to us. He was a bishop in Gaul, modern-day France, in the 5th century AD. His big contribution to history was the introduction of chanting of long litanies in the days anticipating the ascension of Jesus. Over time, this became attached to the Feast of St. Mark and grew into the Rogation days. Now, the Ice Saints. In Northern Europe, the Farmer's Almanac types call the three days from May the 11th to May the 13th a Black Thorn Winter. They claim, and it seems to turn out that it's usually true, that these three days tend to bring the last spell of frosty weather, even when it's been warming a bit early. The three saints, then, whose feasts fall on the days of Blackthorn winter are called ice saints. That's St. Mamertus and or St. Boniface of Tarsus on the 11th, St. Pancras on the 12th, and St. Servatius on the 13th. In the more Germanic areas, they add the 14th and St. Sophia to the list. They call her Cold Sophie. The Polish don't like ice saints, so they call them the Cold Gardeners. And where Sophie is added, she's called Zofia, la do Anna, Sophie the Ice Woman. Moving from cold to sultry and warm, today is the birthday in 1904 of Spanish surrealist Salvador Domingo Felipe Jacinto Dali Dominic, the first Marquis of Dali de Pubo. Rather than sign that whole mess to the bottom of his paintings, he painted professionally as Salvador Dali. Dali, like his Catalan countryman Gaudí over in Barcelona, was enamored of the surreal. He described his style as a love for everything that is gilded and excessive. Dali's work wasn't just weird to be weird. He was very deliberately trying to share his fascination with the modern, rapidly changing world. Perhaps his most famous work, in which clocks are shown to melt across the canvas, was Dali's homage to Einstein's work with relativity and time. You don't really see many painters trying to share their fascination with quantum physics on the canvas. Dali's work reflected his private life. He was in many ways like Fitzgerald's J. Gatsby. He was incredibly wealthy and was free to embrace the strange, the excessive, and the unusual. And while he dabbled in sculpture, architecture, literature, fashion, and even theater, his own peculiar and potentially scandalous social life and his painting are his legacy. Dali died in Catalonia in 1989 at the age of 84. Today is the birthday in 1933 of Anna Marguerite McCann. She was born in upstate New York and pioneered the field of underwater archaeology. It's a field to which most of us, I expect, haven't given all that much thought. Most of us think archaeology in our minds go to the desert. But there's much to be learned from the great sunken cities of India, China, and the Mediterranean. McCann got started in the underwater archaeology game in the 60s and spent most of her time in the warm waters of the Mediterranean working with the remains of Roman Empire-era shipwrecks and temples which had collapsed into the sea and which were sunk by earthquakes or volcanoes. She was the first woman in the field and really one of the first people in the field full stop. She died in Sleepy Hollow, New York in 2017. Finally, today is an interesting anniversary. In the West, we think printed books and we think Gutenberg Bible, 1450s. But as with so many things, the Chinese beat us to the punch, and they did it by nearly 600 years. Today in AD 868, a copy of the Diamond Sutra, a Buddhist religious text, was printed with a publication date. It is by far the oldest printed book that can be accurately dated. And of course, that means that the Chinese may well have mastered the technology years earlier. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.